28, and we're coming to you from the G4 studios here in Los Angeles. Today, we're going to take a fond look back at the most dangerous things we've ever forced our staff to do over the past 12 months. We've got everything from the lady battles of Wiffle Bat Fight Club to the Bruce skin from Job Hunt 07 Plus. We'll also get you into some of the biggest events like E3, Comic Con, and our second entry into the Guinness Book of World Records with the world's largest arcade cabinet. Then PETA gets all up in a grill when we show off our best animal-related stunts. Did you miss us making kittens run through a Ninja Warrior set? Now's your chance to see it. And we'll look fondly back on the biggest stunt of the year when we actually knocked someone out. When did we do that? We're going to look back on it. It happened. We call them stunts, and they're the parts of our show where people get hurt <laughs> both physically and emotionally. Especially emotionally. Hopefully though. emotionally. Yes. It's a proud tradition dating back to the original founders of Attack of the Show who came over on the Mayflower. Oh, yes, who can forget uh, Man Overboard 1620 Live? Ah, oh, right? Followed, oh. of course, by the controversial Indian Hunt 1621. Ooh. You ready? Get set! Bogan! <laughs> Done! Yeah! Woo! Now, Will's gonna, gonna take it to it. He's been growing this out for several years for a very ah. special someone. <laughs> Can't seem to find Keep or raging. hire a special someone, but there we go. I'm gonna shoot Will. No, seriously, I'm gonna just, yeah. Dude. Sam, take good care of her. Let's do it. Olivia, please don't die. Look at that. Can I, can I give it a smack like it's a MySpace girl? Smack that yeah. bitch. Come on. Right back. Oh. Oh, no. It's Steer Roast 06 <laughs> Live. Live. Bad boy. Oh, oh, yeah. Nice. That's. Oh. Yes, that's it. What? He's on fire. Am I on fire? He's on I'm fire. I'm not on fire. The meat's out on fire. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, he's getting a little... Okay. Don't, don't wiggle. They're gonna bite. Oh my god! This must bring you back to those sorority days. <laughs> Jesus! Now she's moving! Ah! Now she's moving! All right, all right. Okay. It is the... Whiffle Bat, Bat Fight Club! <laughs> Simpler time. I noticed something in our faces. I thought it was youth. I realized it was joy. Oh, I'm still happy. It's fun working here. Simpler times. Yeah, simpler times when we could actually create snow in Southern California, spitting in the very face oh. of God Himself. If God had a face, which I'm not quite sure if He has a face because He has a spirit or a being, right. or actually the Father of the world. And the bottom line is that it's not good TV if it's not blasphemous. That I is think. true. Yes. Or if it hurts someone's feelings. That's always good. That is good as well. Putting a bunch of uh, ladies in skimpy outfits, though, and making them hit each other with bats, oh, that, however... Is that... great television. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's time for... Girls, Girls Wiffle, Wiffle Bat, Bat Fight Club! Club! for the championship of the world. Fight!
a controversial ruling, yes. but a solid one. The word of steel is law. It's for the world championship, by the way. There was. <laughs> he just declared that. Someone should tell Asia. <laughs> Some of our most truly inspirational moments happen when we set our sights on our own staff and then shoot them mm. with air rifles. Yeah, Job Hunt was such an event. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the finest of 2007, really, when we forced two of our show's producers to compete in everyday office tasks under fire. It's now the moment that, well, at least we've been waiting for all week long. Our two associate producers, Steve and Jeremy, are about to battle it out for a promotion. That's right. It's time for Job Hunt 07 Live. Both of these very talented producers are going to prove that they have what it takes to make it to the next level. While they try to attempt some normal production tasks, the two of us will blast them with these airsoft guns. They have three very simple tasks to complete. They have to collate some script pages that are totally out of order, fax an agreement to my agent, this guy, and then find a DVD buried in a stack. And in this case, it's a, a wonderful little family yes. film called Thunder Pants. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is all happening while they're dodging our airsoft shots. Now, the first one to complete the task without crying, because really there's no crying in TV unless you're Kevin. In my dressing room. You are the winner. <laughs> yes, and that valiant winner not only gets a promotion, but bragging rights yeah. for years to come. It's, a, it's another tick on the man card. Jeremy, what's your approach? Are you psyched? You've been practicing? Uh, I don't need to practice because, as you know, Steve is a bitch. Oh, and, ooh, hold on. aren't good at anything. Oh. Steve, get over here. What, what's your strategy? You know, I, uh, I've been practicing, but I'm not totally afraid unless someone shoots Jeremy in his vagina because then he will just yeah. fold over. Well, he already has a lot of sand in it. Yeah, it's, so yeah, it's cold. that would just suck to have so. sand in and pull it. Let's get this Woo! going. 60 seconds on the clock, please. In <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> I got fixed safety off. Hache, you feel that? That's just me, Hache. That's just me. That's just me. I'm aiming for the hands. Come on, buddy, get in there. Hache, get in I'm there. just nailing you, just I'm so you know. Hache as well. Go, oh, go, on to stage two. I'm shooting through the paper. Shoot through the paper. Get those hands. Get those hands. Oh my God. I'm just sitting here. I'm Look rolling. Look at his arm. I feel bad. Look at his arm. Look at this guy. Oh my God. Okay, I'm going for, I'm going for Hache's arm. Oh, he can't. They're hey, how's that feel? I'm just, I'm Come just on, a little girl. Come on, you little girl. I just have a Back. vagina. Back. I just have a vagina. Before the end, didn't I got it. oh my gosh! Well done, if, if I may. Uh, oh, interview Hache, are you okay? The winner. Shaking. That actually. Oh. You're shaking. How's that feel, Steve? Look at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, oh my god! Let's show it off. Yeah, you know what? Pain, yeah. pain is temporary, but I got thunder pants and glory lasts forever. Thunder pants is eternal. No, wait, your thoughts. wait. Let's take a shot of what I did to. How's that for a girl with a vagina? It actually hurts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right now, though, that is going to do it for Job Hunt 07 Live. I love it. That actually hurts a lot. The next day, Jeremy kept telling people how clumsy he was. Yes, and then he lived in an apartment made entirely of stairs. That's true. Oh, yeah. the shame. Yeah. But you actually had to get uh, uh, beaten with bullets afterwards yeah. because yeah, go ahead and tell. apparently Kevin's safety was on, and so Steve wasn't getting you know hit with any uh, bullets or airsoft pellets. So. The next time, uh, Kevin had to get, uh, what is it? How well, many it was, uh, you have to cycle the bullets into the clip or mm -hmm. something like that. So I only shot like 20 rounds or something like that yeah. at Steve. Jeremy got like, raped, though. Jeremy so. got like a hundred. But, but I, I did feel bad, so I wanted to give him a chance to at least try to get even. So this is Job Hunt 07 Live Redemption. I had an epic fail on yeah. Friday. Explain what happened. Airsoft guns, these automatic ones, they have a little wheel that needs to be rotated yeah. on the bottom of the and magazine. And if you notice, all I'm doing is I'm rotating and, pu and pulling the trigger at the same time. Exactly. And you have to, you have to uh, spin this little lever or this little reel to feed bullets into the gun. Well, in the heat of the oh, moment, Jeremy. I totally forgot to do that. And as such, Steve was only shot a handful of times during the competition. Jeremy, though, received like a plastic pellet raping. Yeah. And uh, I don't know 84, if his were still there, but 84 bullets. And that didn't seem fair. It didn't seem right. So to make amends, I said, Jeremy, it's only fair that you unload on me. That's right. Now, yeah. Jeremy, let, let's, let everyone see your war wounds. He really got shot up. I actually hit him, hit the man 84 times. Hey there. Wait, turn it, turn it inside. Flex there those guns, is. buddy. So, Jeremy. Are, yeah. are you ready for redemption? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, well, you have 15 bullets, which is how many Steve took on Friday. Great idea on, on Friday. And you came up with it. Yeah. And it's now time for redemption. So Watch on my yourself. count, everyone, begin shooting. In three, two, one, fire! No. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Get his arms. Get his arms with your arms. Oh. Yeah, okay. So right now, you got to shoot low. Oh, are you done? Are you out of bullets? 
Good job. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, well done. All right. Were you trying to make a J? Yeah. Was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> well done, Jeremy. All right, I think we're good now. That did not feel good at all. See? We do treat our staff right after we shoot them. Yes, yes. All's always. fair in, in love and television. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Stick around, everybody. We'll have more examples of things you definitely should not do right after this. Here's what's coming up on today's Attack of the Show. We're building, breaking, and beating down our greatest stunts into one explosive package. It's big, bad, and record-breaking. We're showing off the largest arcade machine you've ever seen. And... We're not going down without a fight when we bring you the first ever nerd mixed martial arts showdown. We put our lives on the line for your approval when the attack comes back. the show today's best of stunt show where we're showing off the biggest and the best of 2007 the show is brought to you by insurance so thanks for looking out <laughs> now not all stunts have to be dangerous or cause one of our recent hires bodily harm granted those are fun and endlessly amusing but sometimes we we set our sights high yeah like when a tag of the show breaks world records huh? Hello. About that? guinness has recognized our achievements in the past mm -hmm. we actually created the world's largest nintendo controller for example this year, we all felt like teenagers again, thanks to the creation of the world's biggest arcade machine. We have built what we believe is the world's largest fully functional arcade machine. It's right behind me. It's 14 feet tall, has a five foot wide, 75 inch screen, and plays 150 classic arcade games. Joining us to verify that this is indeed the world's largest arcade machine, well, we hunted down and we've captured a real life Guinness world record representative in the flesh, the Honorable Mr. Stuart Claxton. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Absolutely, man. Now listen, the annual Guinness World Records Day was yesterday, correct? Indeed. Okay, so records are being shattered all around the world. Looking at this thing right now, I know you haven't seen it with the naked eye. Do you think we have a shot at the latest world record? Yeah, I mean, most definitely. Just by judging by the sheet that's needed to cover this thing, I think you, you're in good shape. And uh, it's a great way for Attack of the Show to be part of Guinness World Records Day. You guys, it has been covered up all show long, so I think it is just about time to rip the skirt off this giant beauty. Kevin, yeah. you want one end? Don't I got call the me other? a giant beauty. Now oh. the moment is upon us all. Can I get a drum roll, please? Okay, ready? And three, two, one. Here we go. Two, one. This thing is ridiculous. Wow. You wanna, should Let's we rock it? Ready? Absolutely, I'll tell you right now. Arcade in a box, they boot Windows XP first, then it loads the vintage games from a menu. It's 75 inches diagonally, it's made of Daytex. It's a beautiful thing. 5,000 lumens in this baby. DLP projector, it's got a xenon lamp. 0.8 sport short throw lens to decrease the projection distance to four feet people. Look at these guys playing. Six inch long joysticks, by the way, and 2.5 inch buttons. It's huge! You've laid eyes on this thing. What do you think, man? Do we have it? Yeah, yeah, it conforms to all our guidelines. It's uh, just like an original machine, but obviously oversized. It's playable. It's 13 feet tall, nine wide, five deep. Amazing. A new Guinness World Record. Thank you very much. Attacking the show, baby. Fun fact, the world's largest arcade machine costs $17 million to make. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so don't expect your check to clear this month. Oh. Yeah. That's too bad, because I wanted to buy a pony. Oh, well. I was just kidding. It was just a, just a joke no, for all those laughs. No. That's all no. that was. <laughs> that was a good joke. Okay, besides creating false idols to worship like the arcade machine talking about some yes. stuff right here. Yes. Attack of the Show often makes pilgrimages uh, pilgrimages to geek events around the world. Pilgrimai? Pil Pilgais? We mostly do it to get laid or, or to take you inside <laughs> you uh, for exclusive coverage, <laughs> which is how would I call it. Uh, whether it was for the 30th anniversary of Star Wars, huge product launches like the iPhone, a trip inside of Comic-Con, mm -hmm. uh, you guys really all year long you had a VIP, a VIP pass to everything. We 
We're coming to you from the epicenter of the year's biggest pop culture event, from Iron Man to Watchmen, Doctor Strange to Dr. Zoidberg. We will bring you all the live interviews, breaking news, and announcements, and movies, television, comics, and Kevin, there's so much more. A ton more, Olivia. Celebrities, fanboys, and superheroes have all made the pilgrimage here to San Diego to kneel at the altar of all things nerd. And we're going to bring it to you live exclusively on G4. All right, right now, let's go over to Zach Selwyn, who's live at the Manhattan Apple Store on Fifth Avenue. Selwyn. The doors are open. Now let's talk to one of these people who was lucky enough to score an iPhone. The line is still around the corner. Apple stockholders are very happy, and I'm here with Rebecca, one of the early adopters of the iPhone. You were there immediately. Uh, Tuesday, I saw you. Yeah. Tuesday, what's today? It's Friday. Well done. That's three days. I've been waiting a long time. The entire Star Wars universe has converged on this one building for their biggest party ever. Star Wars has turned 30. Come on. That's right. Happy and, and for the next two hours, we're going to bring you all the big announcements, celebrity interviews, and inside info on where Star Wars is headed for the next 30. Now, one of the cult favorites of the Star Wars franchise, of course, it's Billy D. Williams, played smuggler Lando Calrissian. Now, we recently sat down with Colt 45 himself <laughs> to pick his brain about his Star Wars memories and so much more. Do you think Lando should have been a little bit more featured? In, you know, the Definitely. I was looking for him to really save the day in a much bigger way. Welcome, everybody, to E307 Live. It's okay to be excited. It's only the <laughs> biggest week in gaming. We will be your all-access pass to this exclusive event with hands-on demos of the most buzzed about new games, plus exclusive interviews with some of the biggest insiders in the business. We'll see you guys later. And another 30. Thanks again, everybody. We got really dressed up for E3. I, was, I liked it. I thought it was nice. It was nice. It was our men's warehouse. <laughs> you guys, so many events, so much contact with the unwashed masses. It was yeah. great. We'll be doing even more globe trotting next year, so hide your daughters. We'll be at E3, <laughs> AEE, CES. Any event, really, that has an E in it, we'll, we'll be there. It's on our calendar. <laughs> Stay right there, you guys. We have animals. Guest host and road trips coming up. Don't worry, we cut all the boring stuff out. You're gonna see only the best of 2007. We're taking a walk on the wild side with animal hijinks from turkey chases to katana kittens coming up. And we hit the road at the risk of our own to bring you home wrecking, pool smoking stunts from around the nation. show and right now Miss Mun's gonna testify. That's right. Uh, but before I do, I have to say this is the best of uh, 2007 stunts. Mm -hmm. But you know what it is? It's also a day of the year that we like to appreciate the moment that Kevin Prayer's mother opened up her <laughs> vagina yes. and pushed this beautiful man into the world. I was, um, it is this man's birthday. I was cesarean, but thank you. Oh. So. It was this man's birthday. It so was I'm it's still my birthday, but thank so you. Happy yes. birthday, Kevin Prayer. Yes. And, and a round of applause for my mother's yeah. vagina while we're at it. <laughs> and your mother's open wound and gaping. Uh, no, actually, I, I came out. Oh, okay, yeah, you came yeah, out. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thanks for ruining the joke. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, now, the executive producer <laughs> has said something very powerful. Unto us, let us gather the animals for the viewer's pleasure. Mm. And the minions went forth and collected all manner of animals such as turkeys, leopards, and goats. And the viewers looked upon them. And they were pleased. Hey, hold on a second. Let's check in one last time with our dear friends. Oh, our, look at that. Listen, it's our two girls in the tub, and they're enjoying a fresh drink. Uh, and so is our, our, our friend with the goats. Yeah. Is that, is that lemonade? That looks like oh, lemonade. Oh, man, they are having a blast over there. Oh. That's one big old party they're having. That's a party, but yeah. I've never seen one. Those girls in the tub with the lemonade yeah, and the uh, goats. I see what you're and doing. And the beverage. Show the show. Come on, I got to tell you. Pet your pussy? Now we've got another message from the TV front. It's the army of monitor heads. Oh, come in. What? How did you do that? What, do what? Let's head into the ring to meet our combatants. First up, we have Nathan, the nibbler, Gobblesbird. Yeah. He's three feet, eight inches tall, weighs 15 and three quarter pounds, goes great with Chardonnay, mm. and once killed a man. Interesting. Next, we have Douglas Dark Meat Johnson. Standing at three feet, ten inches tall, and clocking in at 17 and a half. 
the only bird to beat bird flu, oh. and also he took Pocahontas' virginity. Good, good chanting. Yeah. Good chanting name, the dark meat. Turkey Everybody Wars go. has officially begun. Go, baby, go. Oh, no, forward. Come on, cowboy. Go. Let's go. Exciting, uh, and that officially concludes the epic turkey wars for the year. Yeah! Man, machine, and definitely turkey will never be the same. Why are bats the only animal who have a separate name for their poop? What about cow pies? Oh, those are delicious. Poop joke. <laughs> poop. Sold it. You know what else are delicious? Kittens. Oh, I yeah. love when you make it with some Kung Pao kitten. It's mm. so good. Delicious. Here are two kittens that uh, actually might be a little too tough for eating them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Me it's, up. it's time for Kitten Warrior. It's time to put our first challenger through the course, Olivia. I believe you and yes. Frisky Phil All right. are up first. All right, let's get 60 seconds on the clock, please, and you'll start when I say go, which will follow three, two, one, and go. Yes, I am doing very good, thank you. Oh, yeah, see, that's what happens when you get overconfident. あ、危ない場所。危ない場所。ちょっと落ちたね。ちょっと。食べ物落ちたね。いいフード。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと
My guest tonight stars in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Welcome to the show, Bo Garrett, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Very excited today. Wow. Now I'll go for his groin. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, we need to go now. Let's welcome David Arquette, everybody. Thank you. David, thanks for being here. Very exciting. Thanks for having me. I noticed uh, that there's uh, a website you have. It's about giving etiquette tips online. It's called arquetiquette.com. That's right. We would hope that you would answer a few questions live right here. We have some viewer questions. Is that all right? Fantastic. Okay, great. Bobby in Boston. He asks, after besting an opponent in Halo, how many thrusts is appropriate when performing a tea bag? I think uh, three thrusts is a real, just sort of, you know, it just gets the point across. Now, is it like a real tea bag where you kind of dip, dip, and then do a good dip, or you do full dips each time? No, full dip, definitely okay. full dip. And, uh, you know, if you're on the date with the girl, that, you know, that should be at least three dates. Too. Oh, <laughs> good that. to know. I'm on the, on the second one, but I'll hold out for that last one, David. <laughs> there you go. All right, joining us right now from Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job, are Casey and his brother. And they're actually here to perform for us, so please welcome Casey and his brother. Listen, buddy. Buddy, right. It's Tara Patrick, everybody. Welcome, Tara. Wow. Do you have a favorite position? You know, you're going to laugh. I would have to say it's missionary. I, 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 I can tell you that's become my favorite yeah. recently, too. Because you get to look into the face and to the eyes, and I think the eyes are really intense. And, yeah. You know, when you can really gaze into someone. <laughs> some, some intense eyes. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Her her husband was constantly going, Tara, like, let me see your cleavage. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Tara. No, <laughs> there's so much of him. He kept, you know, he kept going, scream Tara at us. Uh, speaking, speaking of which, actually, G4's got the adult world unzipped. That's right. As we take you deep inside the 2008 mm. Adult Entertainment Expo in Las Vegas. Hello, elbow deep. Hey, is the largest convention of its kind, fulfilling all your adult fantasies. Catch this year's highlights in G4's two-hour exclusive TV event Hello. as Kevin and I interview filmmakers, industry executives, and, of course, the stars. Yes, this is uh, your chance to be there without the risk of actually having to admit that you are there. Yeah. Anna, David, and Zach will be there, too, as well, if, you know, for educational purposes. That's right. That's Check that's out all the action on Sunday, January 13th, right here only on G4. So go to G4TV.com slash AEE for info and updates. You guys, don't go anywhere. We'll have more of the best and biggest stunts of 2007 right after yep. We're taking chaos on the road as we show off the best stunts from our viewers' own homes. And no one's giving these geeks a wedgie as they battle to become the ultimate nerd mixed martial artist. We're going to make one of our production assistants try to blow up a cotton yeah. over his head. Yeah. Keep going, pop it! Chris! Do you want to pop with my key? No, I kind of want to see how far I can go. Oh my gosh! Oh god! <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Attack of the Show's most dangerous days from the past year. I lived through them, others were not so lucky. Should we have a moment for them? Or? Um, I'm okay. Okay. I spent the first week of December on the road actually visiting yeah. some of our biggest fans. I only barely survived the experience, though. Stops at the homes of all the Attack of the Show fans. Right now I'm in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Is that where the hell I am? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. AKA Captain Smee, and we've got some. Yeah. Yeah. Two problems, the poster and the lack of a crew. So let's just get the pirates out here and solve them both right now. Florida coming to you live from the house of Javon McNeil. He's a huge Attack of the Show fan, avid stick cam chatter, and he's right through this door. Let's go inside and see what's up. Javon. Yeah! Yeah, I don't trust
trust the uh, the airlines with my, my packages anymore. Southwest, I blame you. they scuffed my real doll and they wouldn't reimburse me. So now I just send everything UPS, so if you don't mind. Now this, I don't know. Any idea what's in here? <laughs> no, and I'm afraid to open it. Oh, I guess we'll, we'll see what's in here. Let's pop on into it and see what we got right. here. I don't actually remember packing that though, so, uh, so I guess I'll just send it on back. Uh, I think I can take that. From you wanna, well, I can't just give it to you. I mean, I think, oh, why not? and maybe your buddies would agree with me that, you know, a, a gift like this would deserve something back, like <laughs> something to show that you support Attack of the Show, that you care about us. Oh. You know, like uh, I see I see this and I saw your surprise, right? Your eyebrows raised, and yeah. I thought two eyebrows is really just a waste, right? It's one extra eyebrow. You only need what? One. One eyebrow. Javon, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's for a... Uh, yeah. All fair and love and war. No, that's just good. All fair. Oh. That's looking good. I, I really like this. This is good. I think that was worth it for an idea. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Kevin Pereira here, continuing my coast-to-coast -coast odyssey for Attack of the Show. I've somehow landed in the city of brotherly love, where, according to my completely retracted genitals, it's, uh... It's about zero degrees outside. Flitz was telling me that, that Mama, is a, you know, she likes to collect things, sometimes a little too much for her own good. And, and he was hoping that the blend tech could help her eliminate some of the clutter in this room, right, Mama? Yeah. So Flitz, what do you think we should toss in the old blend tech? I don't know, Mac Bear. What's going on, everybody? Kevin Pereira here on the final destination of my countrywide Attack of the Show fan tour. Standing here with the Gift King, you know him as uh, Extreme and AZ. I know him now as Nate. Thanks for having me here. So let's get some nitrogen in the pool. Guys, don't try this at home. If you have a, a Motel 6 pool or something like that, do it there. Four, three, two, one. Get in there, Nate. We were going to throw the nitrogen on him while he was diving in, but it didn't work. You didn't come fun. back empty-handed, though, either, did oh, you? Oh, no, I did not. No. I did Tell not. them what you got. You got bird flu, SARS, HIV? Um, actually, doctors are still trying to figure it all out, but they do know that the morning after pill cures it, so oh, we're so good. Oh, so you got something to, go. to fix yeah. it. Well, I, have, I keep several. By the I would side. love if there was a disease named after you. Oh, oh. case of the capers? <laughs> the case of the capers. That's awesome. Now, you guys, I have got a pretty good attendance record, but there are some days when showing up to work is simply not going to happen for reasons of schedule or hangover or something. Let's commemorate the people that backed us up when we were playing hooky. Thank you. There Thank you, you go. And you guys are welcome. Hey! Welcome back to G4. Views on one Alex Albrecht nothing. back in the studio. Yeah, that's nothing. Nothing? Or, I get like <laughs> bazillion views on my home pages. Do you? That's a lot of views. I don't even have home pages. <laughs> From Super Troopers and the Sasquatch gang, Joey K. You may also know him from the Ralph's on Sunset where he likes to buy his groceries. Hey, Joey. Okay. I'm Olivia Mom, but that doesn't matter because filling in for Kevin today. Yeah. Mr. Chris Hardwick. Just temporarily. Temporarily. Seriously, no. But you know. No not, rabbit emails. <laughs> Where is Kevin Pereira? No, they will love you just the same really? because you're white and you put gel in your hair. Yeah, I do. Same thing. I do. I, I, I strategically dishevel my hair. Like, I don't care. About As anything. Kevin does. See? I have a very special guest filling in for Kevin since it is the International Day of the Ninja. Yes. There is only one person we could ask. You may From. Yeah, we might not even know you. You probably don't know me until yeah. it's too late. <laughs> it's That's the right. ninja. But it's International Day of the Ninja, big it time. Is. Ninjas all around the world just going crazy, killing everything they see. They just... Go to the two shot for a second. We'll, okay, we'll yeah. do this right all now, right. right? This, right? Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. You see that? Can I get you? That's sure, absolutely. Okay, ready? Yeah. Can you move your arm so I can get sure. you? Oh, okay. Now that was. I'm gonna be honest with you. That was kind of hard. That yeah. was. That was. That was. Uh, that wasn't very nice. That was a heck of a punch right there. <laughs> oh, Folks out there, do not mess with the moon. No, it's actually Mun, but thank you. That's right. Um, <laughs> Today I'm making it home. All right, whatever. Uh, you know what? I take it back. It's Mun, because I don't want you to punch me again, basically. It's okay. Thanks for watching the show. That was a nice shot. Yeah. I'll give you that. Do you want me to actually punch you? 
Look, I gave the ninja the benefit of the doubt and avoided the face, but you know my name, Kevin. Don't you know my name? You know my name, don't you? Olivia. Olivia, Olivia what? Olivia Mun. Yeah, that's Mun. right. So why would you say moon? Why would you say moon? It's not a funny joke. Witness the future of technology with CES. Suck it up, Prayer, and say live. it with enthusiasm. G4's inside look at the motherboard of all tech shows. Come on, excited. They're actually flying us out of town to do this. We'll you be excited. I'm so tired of flying. We'll <laughs> highlight the newest innovations in electronics, awesome. gadgetry, and the world Stop of gaming. making Kevin travel. We will be at CES the moment the doors open, giving you two days of live behind-the-scenes coverage. G4 has your exclusive all-access pass to everything CES. Mm. I might call in sick. I don't know. Catch the uh, show from Vegas starting Monday, January 7th, only on G4. Just check out G4TV.com slash CES for mm -hmm. info and updates. You guys don't go anywhere. We're about to wrap up the day with fighting. Yeah, highlights of G4's most beloved event of the year, Nerd MMA, on TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. Coming up, two of the biggest, baddest nerds battle for everlasting geek glory during the first ever Nerd Mixed Martial Arts Challenge. some bloody, bloody violence. Now, one of our favorite things that we have ever done here on Tag of the Show is nerd mixed martial arts, where we had MMA fighters compete against each other in the ring and in geek challenges. Well, that was what was supposed to happen. Here's the tale of the tape. Yeah. We are about to get rocking with the first match ever of its kind. It's Nerd, nerd MMA. MMA. We'll alternate between the two events, a physical fight and a mental challenge. This is unlike any event of its kind, and in the end, we will find out who is the ultimate nerd in mixed martial arts. Here are the fighters, ladies and gentlemen. First up, it's Philip Brown. He's 19 years old, five yeah. foot, 10 inches tall, weighs a buck 65, loves God of War, and is definitely into Star Wars. His opponent is Eric Nelson, 23 years old. He is six foot one and 155 pounds. He likes Halo, Heroes, and Manga. All right, and here we go. Round one of wow. Nerd MMA is about to explode. Referee Phillip's Andy Wang. Yeah, Philip's definitely okay. in a good shape here. Eric's looking good as always. Yeah, uh, Philip Brown on the right hand yeah. side of the screen. Eric Nelson on the left. Now Richard, Philip is definitely the underdog in this, right? Uh, no, Philip oh. just has. He, he's he's a newbie. He's just fighting left. He's yeah. fought left. He's fought but he's left. been training for ages. I mean, he's got some serious training. Yeah. Here, Eric Nelson is definitely the veteran here with a three, two, and one record. Eric Nelson has a much smaller. Or Philip Brown definitely has a much smaller record. But uh, he's, he's, Richard, I kept hearing that Eric is the ballroom brawler. It looks like he's trying to take down Philip right now. Which yeah. Uh oh. Wait, what I like here is Philip was a wrestler. In high Eric just gave him his back. Philip was a wrestler. This is a in high very so bad position here. Moves. For Eric Nelson. He's got to protect his arm there. He's going for an arm bar. So what is he doing? Is he trying to get up? Philip is trying to get... Is he, he's going Phillip's for an arm bar. a little bit too high on his back to get a land. So Eric's trying to go out the back door. He oh, he did. Eric's out. Good knees here. Oh. Good knees. Oh. And a takedown. There's that. There's that wrestling background to Philip. Absolutely. Now, I'm definitely seeing all of his wrestling moves he's learned in high school. I mean, those... That, that whole series was just wrestling. Yep, and Philip Brown still wrestles in Masters, which is, you know, Amer you know. Oh, now he's, he's got him some punches. Out, he's got him in the mouth. Oh! Eric, oh God. trying to get out clean, looking for the arm. Let's Eric go. is looking like he's... Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh. Philip is out. That is it. Oh, wow, a brutal knee there in the oh, first God. round. And that's how it went down here at the Nerd MMA, Andy Wang. All right, we got Eric Nelson, winner by knockout. Let me get around here. Yeah. Great fight, guys, great fight, great fight. And the violence, the knockouts, no, they don't no. stop there. Nerd MMA was a huge success. Of course, we had to do it again. Of course. You know, we, we knew it was good TV, but we nerds are a little fragile. Even the fighting type. Mm. It's the time we've all been waiting for. It's our Nerd MMA main event. You're saying redemption. Uh, could be, could be. These fighters met uh, a little over a month ago and it ended with Eric Nelson's win in, uh, in the first round. It was an incredible knockout. Yes. And now it's time for the rematch. Nerd MMA. 
All right, for our first nerd round, we're going to start things off with famous weapons That's right. from gaming history. The fighters are given right, boards fighters, with famous weapons from gaming history, and they've got to match them. The bell has rung. Round one is underway. Right. Kevin, do you think you could do this? Is this something you could do? Yeah, I could. This is. I think this is pretty easy on the on the nerd scale. Eric Nelson has managed to completely destroy the board. Uh. Uh, <laughs> rather than ripping off the weapons and rearranging them, he's chosen and, to rip off the what, titles. Well, that nerd round is over. So guess what? Time for it's time to get physical. That's here right. we go, folks. It's the rematch that nerds across the country have been waiting for. Let's go. All right, ah! Round two is oh, underway. It's I'm very first excited about this. Martial arts round. Philip seeking now, redemption. Eric trying to clinch the title, goes for a takedown right away. Oh. And it yeah, looked like no. Eric was defending it, but he managed to get him down, and now Philip. I remember Philip had, like, had a big wrestling background. Is that Phillip right, Richard? Eric's back. Yeah, Philip has a huge wrestling background. Enough LA looks, and Aquanet in that moment. Yeah. Oh, did he get showboat? Yeah, yeah, that was a little showboat that there. Showboating. That's, that's All right. Eric for the entertainer Nelson. Yeah. Mm, we have quotes from both Star Trek and Star Wars. Captain Voyager 6 disappeared into... Eric? Star Trek. That's no moon, it's a space station. Uh, Star Wars. Sir, the possibility of successfully... Star Trek. That is incorrect. Sure. By the way, uh, by the way, that showboating into the camera earlier cost me now. All right, the fighters are in the ring. Let's get it going. It's round four. Oh, oh Philip pops there. Toe. Eric looked stunned there for a second. He did. Philip has really turned a corner this round. It's so far, his game. Oh, oh. He's just slamming Eric against uh, the cage. And Eric's got a. Uh, Eric Eric oh. oh, Philip slams Holy him to get out of it. Yeah. Eric's got the armbar again. He's got the oh. We have our last nerd challenge, and this is really cool. We're going to have a solar system, and you have to put planets in order. There they go. Now, if they had played Solar Quest when they were younger, I'm no. just glad that Eric is not eating the poster board. Yeah. Okay, okay that's it. Well, if Philip managed to get any planets in the right order, I think he yeah. won that round. Last round, here we go. And this is what What's it all comes happen? down to. What do you think is going to happen? Redemption or epic fail. Yeah. It's oh! Oh! oh, oh. oh. It is it, Mark. Spinny kick hard. two, shoot in, do a reversal by Eric. Both fighters doing a great job. He may have the triangle here. Since Eric will not tap out though. He will get passed out. Oh. Oh, wow. And that is the round, it is over. So the winner, four to three, ladies and gentlemen, it's Philip, your nerd MMA champion. He wins the belt and the redemption. And that that's ends, how you do it. And that ends our best stunts of 2007. Now, you guys, we have just got to uh, up the ante for our 08. Yeah. I don't even know what we're going to do. It's going to oh, be I exciting. Know, I know. What? Here. My calendar. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, you know what? Um, just make sure to tune in December. January 2nd, 2008. That's when we're coming back. Uh, we'll have a whole year of great stuff um, to do. Zach Selwyn stamps his passport in Hong Kong to check out a kung fu school, pick up some cheap knockoff electronics, and probably join some sort of underground crime syndicate. Join another one, you mean. Really? Yeah. And we'll head to Vegas for the World Series of Beer Pong, and we'll yes. probably pick up a communications degree along the way. <laughs> probably. Do you Just think I would win at Beer Pong? Yeah, actually. I can see you doing that. It's, it's in your blood. Yeah. <laughs> Go to g4tv.com slash AOTS for all the things you saw today and more. Good night, everyone. See ya. I like your, uh, I'm like...